Master, why do you think America won? Warning, sensitive content. After seeing the tragic news from Kabul, Afghanistan, in which many Afghans, Americans and members of the Taliban lost their lives on August 26, 2021, Supreme Master Ching Hai shared her pain and tearful sorrow with us, plus this message for the inflictors. Whoever carries such attacks on innocent children and women, old and young men also, are cowards. Barbarous, working for evil, working for Satan. They are also the enemies of Islam because they make the world people think Islam is violent. Islam is murderous. They are not Muslim. They are the enemies of Muslims. Just going out anywhere and killing people at random when people are not prepared. Unarmed people like that. They're not Muslim. They don't make any statement. They don't make people understand anything. Just killing people doesn't make anybody understand you. You have to tell people what you want. What is it that is wrong with you or with anybody? I mean, in Kabul, people are already getting out of Afghanistan, of the country. They're not doing anything anymore there. Peace deal is signed. They just want to get out. And anybody who just organizes an attack like that is evil. I repeat again, they are the enemy of Islam because the blessed prophet, peace be upon him, the Quran doesn't tell people to kill anybody at random like that when they're not doing anything wrong to you. You are the infidels, not those innocent people at the airport. Not the U.S. Marines or soldiers, they're just doing their job. They have to. They have to protect the people there who are just trying to get out of the country. They're not doing anything wrong to anybody. So the attackers are the enemies of everyone of the world, especially the enemies of the Muslims because they blacken the Muslims' reputation. They make people think Muslims are bad. Muslims are the people whom you cannot trust, the people who are killers, the people who are cowards, killing the innocents everywhere, not just Kabul airport. It's not the first time. It's not the Kabul airport alone. Just sneaking around and killing everybody like that. That's not Muslim. You are the enemy of Muslims. You are evil. You are the infidels. Stop doing all this. Stop trying to convince people that you're good. Nobody believes any of the things that you say. Nobody believes you. Nobody wants to follow Islam either. If you keep doing this, how do people even dare to come to the Muslim community or want to know the Muslims? What for? Huh? So that they can become killers, murderers like you? No way. You will all go to hell because that's not the teaching of Islam. Islam means peace. Continue like this. We never have peace in the world because of you because of people like you. For your information, the suicide bombers went to hell and whoever are behind these attacks or any of such similar atrocities will go to deeper hell. They're all waiting for you. All the possible hells are waiting for you. Accordingly, I say this in the name of God, in the name of the must Beloved Allah, and in the name of the great prophet, peace be upon him, and the innocent people you killed, all went to heavens, different heavens, and you go to different hells. And that is the truth. Because no one who harms the children of God the way you do will ever go to heaven. You will be staying in hell forever. The victims who died, the American soldiers who died, they went to heaven because they had only love and sympathy while they were on duty. Thus they are rewarded heaven. You and the bombers only had hatred in your heart and the false belief that you go to heaven 
No way. In all my honor, I tell you, no way you go to heaven. No way they went to heaven. No, never. In the name of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him forever. I'm warning you to stop all these atrocities. Otherwise, you will never get out of hell. You will suffer multifold. More, much more than the pain and sorrow you inflicted upon the innocent people, the children and the women and the elderly and all that. Stop all that. Stop it. Stop it now and forever. Stop it. For peace sake, for the love of God, stop all that. Go get a normal job like these people. We just want to be normal human beings. Repent. So God will forgive you. Repent before it's too late. There has been at least one explosion outside Kabul airport and reports of gunfire. significant casualties, including some Americans from a suicide attack outside the country's main airport in Kabul. On the previous day, August 25th, Master also shared her thoughts on the news that the Taliban was not allowing any more Afghans to leave the country. I think the Taliban should let the Afghans and Americans out of Afghanistan. Mm. Because if you want to rule, why should you keep your enemies around? Mm. Just to have like a ticking bomb? That's not very wise to stop your so-called enemies from running out of the country. Just let them go. Good for them. Good for you. Earlier, in another work-related phone call with a Supreme Master Television team member, on August 24th, Master generously answered questions in regards to girls and women living under the Taliban regime, as well as the true outcome of the war in Afghanistan. Um, Master... Uh, is forced child marriage uh, part of the Sharia law? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Forced marriage is not in the Sharia. Oh. Okay? Sharia mm-hmm. doesn't advise the Muslim to rape little girls in the so-called forced marriage, or not marriage even. Yes. It's like in Bangladesh, for example, they just rape anyone they like. Big or small, child or old, that's not Muslim. They besmear the great reputation of Muslims, make people afraid of Islam, of Muslim followers. Yes, Master. The true Muslim people, they don't do that. Yeah. It's just a distortion of the law to suit their desire, you know, their need, uh-huh. their greed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Islam teaching has never been for forcing anything. Mm. Especially a little child, like 12 years old. Right. Or any woman mm-hmm. into any sexual or relationship or so-called marriage, whatever. Never. Yeah. Yes. The Muslim teaching never included any of that, okay? Yeah. We had to go back in time, at the time of the great prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Mm. It was wartime, okay? Right. It's not because the prophet or his followers and make war is the authority at that time. Oh. You see, they had their own established rules and religious order, you know, and of course they rejected anything that didn't look like them. I see. And, but the prophet was teaching the truth. And the truth, according to also whatever the Bible they have at that time, it's just that because he was enlightened and they were not. Even if the prophet's followers did not want to fight, yes, they would be killed. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm. So, of course, many men sacrificed and stayed in the front line. 
-hmm. to protect their family, protect the prophet and other followers. Yeah. And many men died, of course. Of course. So men died, left behind uh, a widow and children. Yeah. So the prophet had advised and requested his followers, whoever is still alive, whoever is able, like financially, yes, yes uh, then take in the widows and the children and look after them just like they are your wife and your family. Not any sexual things. Yeah. Just to take care, like a family and a relative. So yes. later on, they uh, distorted it and, and interpreted it to, to, to suit their needs and their, their uh, lowly desires. I see. Mm. Just for lust and greed. So, you know, it's not Sharia law, okay? Yes. The Sharia law. I'm just saying some examples. It's just to advise uh, men and women how to conduct their lives. Yes. So that they can have more peace in the house, you know? Yes. Like, okay, you don't review yourself. You wear a proper clothes to cover yourself when you talk to a stranger man if they come into your house. Yeah. Understand. So it's not to incite something of a misunderstanding, yeah? yeah? Understand. And it might result in something uh, bad for their marriage and the harmony of their relationship inside the house. Right. Something like that. And mm -hmm. if they go out, they should also wear decently, not tight or revealing too much of your body. Yeah. But it's not like compulsory and cover all over the faces like that. Right. Yeah. Maybe at that time it's also good to cover the faces so that the enemies don't recognize them mm, sure. for their own safety. Yeah. So this is not uh, truly necessary anymore. And it's not a Sharia law. Yes, I understand. Um, Master, before you mentioned uh, arranged marriage in all luck, uh -huh. um, could you tell us more about it, how it is done? Mm, okay. In Vietnam, in all luck, the so-called arranged marriage uh, or consent marriage, you know, required the groom first to work with the in-law family yes. for three years. Oh. Yeah, three years to stay with the wife's family. Understand. So that they can observe his character, you see, oh. and whether or not he is worthy of their trust to have their daughter's hand in marriage. Right. And the girl, meanwhile, also gets to know him, to see him, yes. you see, to get used to each other, whether or not they like. Yeah. Are they compatible in any way? And then, if they agree, okay, if the girl agrees to that, and the family is okay with the boy, yes, they might agree, then he has to bring Big dowry, a lot of gifts yeah, okay. for the family, yeah. for the girl. And in these three years, he has to work very hard. Right. I mean, to show, you know? Mm, he yes. works hard and he has to be careful how to behave and how to coordinate, cooperate with the family and pleasing them. Yeah? Both the parents, the family members, and the girl. Oh, I see. So that's how. The family in Olaf, in the old time, protected their precious daughter. And that's how the man showed his respect and affection to her before he could even marry her at all. Oh, I see. During these uh, three years, the bride family could always cancel the proposal. Understand me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Or the groom may also not like the girl. Yeah. Or the family, or whatever his reason, he can also cancel, oh, and go yeah. home, okay? Yes. But that's how we, we show respect for women. Right. That's how we protect it, the girl in the family, in our life. Yeah. Before. Now, can you imagine what it's like? Suppose the, the Taliban is successful in ruling the country under this rule of theirs, it's yeah. not Sharia. In the world, half is a woman, half is men, no? Yeah, right. Okay, so half of the country under Taliban rule would be like this. The woman is stupid, mm. illiterate, completely dependent, no ability, except relying heavily on her men. Yes. She cannot even read the rose signs. She yeah. cannot even sign her name or read her name. Yeah, master. Subdued like a slave. Right. She relies completely on her man, just 
for any cucumber that she wants to buy mm. for the family. Yes. She cannot go out alone. Yeah. yeah. And the man is, of course, busy earning money or doing work because she cannot. Yeah. She's not allowed to work. She, she cannot even read. All right. Yes. Completely exactly. half of the citizens are stupid, illiterate, and weak, dependent. So there is nothing that the woman can do to help her country. And the other half of the citizens, I mean men, are rapists, child molesters. Oh. Hmm? Right. Robbers, robbing people, or property, or girls, or children, or women. Right. And they become rapists and child molesters. So I wonder, what kind of society is that? What kind of country would the Taliban want to build? Yeah, unimaginable. Yeah. <laughs> می عروسی که بکردن دیگه نگذشتن هر چی که ما گفتم میرم به مکتب میرم امی خسول ما خوشی ما همه کی گفتن که اگه تو بری به مکتب ما کارو مارکی میکنم ما تور بخریدیم اون مقصارمو هم که گفتم میرم مکتب و شوم و خوشوم و همه مر میزدن همین تا با ما اشتو لغات وارد مرد مر میزدن و دو میزدن فاش میگفتن مکتب خو همه می دوران تفریات خورا حالا چی میخوای ولی بدبختی دیگه است که دختران مثلا میگه که مکتب نخون فقط می مدرسه بس است و مدرسه درست است روی شریعت یاد میته قرآن یاد میته تعلیم الاسلام یاد میته در کنار اینا بعضی مسائل های دیگه است که فکر اینا رو کور نگه میداره بی سواد نگه میداره and i wonder also what kind of this an international global community would want to shake hands with them, cooperate with them, or do business with them, or even look at them. Exactly. Uh, how do you deal with the rapists and child molester men and dumb dumb women? Huh? Yeah. Half of the country is dummy, half of the country is violent. Right. Even to their own family. Yeah. Because if a girl doesn't marry to the chosen man any any time, any age, or any look. She might fall in love with somebody else and refuse that man. Then the father will kill the girl, like mm -hmm. honor killing, you know that. Yeah. Many thousands of them are killed every year. Just terrible. فرار کردم سه و نیم سال فرار بودم بعد سه و نیم سال پدرم مرا گرفت سه و نیم سال بعد بود مرا بندی کرد پدرم. محکمه اول دو سال کرد مرا من محکمه دو شش سال کرد. Anissa, not her real name, is in hiding from her parents. They've threatened to kill her because they believe she shamed the family honour by leaving her violent husband. Aya Baradea was buried in May last year. She died after being thrown down this well by her uncle. The uncle told police he'd killed her to protect the family honour, saying she had engaged in improper sexual relations, although they found no evidence to back up those claims. In the spring of 2012, five women from a remote village in Kohistan were allegedly killed by their own family. Their crime? Appearing in a grainy cell phone video that showed them clapping and singing with two young brothers. So how would any international community or neighboring country even want to have anything to do with them? Unless they are all lunatics or possessed by Satan. Yeah. Yes, Master. This kind of rule will not work. It's not practical. It's too dictatorial. Because women, they have to go out. They must go out for their children, for their own needs, you know, to go shopping for the family, to buy yeah. things, to even clean the house, to buy things, to wash their clothes, everything. Yes. If they're completely always dependent on their men, then the men will get vexed. Yeah. And then you turn violent. After all, a man also a human. How how long can he bear all this uh, feeling of being knocked, you know, mm -hmm. into doing everything? Well, the woman can also do that. 
Right. Everything, like going to the doctor, he has to take her and has to take her again and again and again because mm. you go to the doctor, don't always just wait one time finish. Yeah. And then have to take the children to the school and then you uh, take the children maybe to the doctor and all kind of things. You understand? Yes. She cannot always rely on her men all the time, 24-7. Yeah, right. That will breed resentment from the man's part, no matter how nice and gentle he is, okay? Because he's overtaxed. His mm. ability. Yes. He needs to earn a living, he needs to go out, and then he needs to see his friends and all that men's stuff, and then he has to be nagged all the time. True. You know, by yeah. a helpless woman, because she is not allowed to do anything by herself. Right. To go out by herself. Even if she wants to rely on her men's relatives, how many men's relatives are ready for her all the time? Yeah. Or in emergency. Yes. Because yes. these are men's relatives. They are also busy for their wives, yeah, and their kids, and their family, their mother, their sister, whatever. Yeah, this is totally ah uh, impossible. Yeah, true. That's why some of the Muslim Arab countries they now allow women to drive. Yeah. For God's sake, they need to do something. They have to take their children to the school. They have to go shopping. Yeah. Yeah. To buy vegetables and food mm. for the family cannot always make the man do everything. He has to take the kids to school in the morning early and then mm. work all day and then come home and then have to take the wife to go out shopping to yeah. buy buy food mm. and or doctors or whatever. Yeah. Now you know why the woman rise up and many Afghans also rise up against them. The West is also not compliant now. Yeah. Yeah. The Taliban should be more careful, you know? They they are revolted against. There are many forces against them. Yes. And, and, and they better do negotiations and talk. Even the the ones that raise up against Taliban, they, they want negotiations, but the Taliban refused. Mm. And then the, the Taliban even threatened the, the West, like, uh, get out before this and that deadline or else. Yes. Oh, they better not. Because the Americans and the Western military force, they might have gotten out of the country, but they can always come back. Yes. And stronger, more determined if they do come back. Right. <laughs> they are forced to be reckoned with. It's not to, to be threatened mm. or intimidated. Yeah. Huh. They better not intimidate the Westerners mm. and the Americans especially. Okay, huh? President Trump signed the peace deal because he loves peace. He doesn't want to harm any citizens yeah. by chance or by accident or because of fighting. Sometimes it costs people's lives, so he doesn't want all that because he loves people, he loves peace. But that doesn't mean the Taliban can continue coercing them or oppressing them or to intimidate them, okay? Yeah. They are not to be intimidated, the Americans. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. and God knows what kind of, you know, power and weapon they have. Mm. Even if the Taliban seizes all their leftover weapon, that's nothing to them. They have more, yeah. and they have even better, Yeah. more modernized. Wow, yeah. So I don't know why the Taliban is so arrogant right now. <laughs> they better not be, they better be more humble, more cooperative, yeah? And yeah. treat their citizens with respect and consideration. Not to talk about love and compassion yet. Yeah. I don't know if they're capable of that. Mm. The way they torture women, kill women, or kill anybody at random like that, just because they work for Americans. So, as I say, you know, President Trump signed the peace deal because he, he really wants his peace. He doesn't want any more bystanders, innocent deaths for the Afghans as well as for the Americans. Yeah. Yes. But that doesn't mean uh, he is scared of them. Okay? Yeah. He was just a nice president. Yeah? Or maybe mm. bordering, naive, believing that everyone else also plays straight and fair as he does. Mm. Yes. So he believed in the Taliban's promises. That's why he signed the peace accord. And now, even though Biden looks weak, or the the governments or the armies of the international community are leaving and 
it seems like they're very humble. Mm -hmm. But just because they want peace. Right. They want to avoid bloodshed. That's why yes. they humble themselves. But that is not a sign of weakness. Yes. Yeah. Even though they look weak. Maybe Biden is weak or looks weak. But the Americans are not weak. Yeah. They still have their commanders. They still have the generals and the big, whole, powerful, top of the world army. Right. Yeah. So they might even bypass Biden to mm. defend the innocent, helpless Afghans, you know, mm. like the women and the children. So no one should mess with the Americans. Yes. No one should look down upon the Americans. No one should feel like they have victory over the Americans, even though it might seem so. Right. Though they might seem humble now, for peace's sake, but not forever. Mm. If pushed too long and too hard, they might just, you know, pay back. Right. Yeah. Mm. And this time they will not leave any stone unturned. Mm. Yes. So, anyone who feels like they uh, have victory over the Americans, they should <laughs> think twice. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I want to say, because no one should mess with the Americans. Wow, yes. Yes. Yes, Master. If they ever retreat or sign the peace accord, it's because they don't want any more, you know, bloodshed for both sides. Yes. For peace's sake, for humanity's sake, that's all, okay? Right. Not because they're weak. They have all the latest and most modern equipment for war. You see what I'm saying? Yes, Master. So why should they be afraid of anybody? Right. The people who should be afraid are the Taliban. Because the Americans, they're not afraid of anything. That's right. why they went from one country to another, wherever is in need of their powerful protection. Right. Yeah. They don't mind sacrificing their finance or their most useful and beautiful and powerful men and women mm. to protect others, you know, no matter how far yes. that country is, no matter if that country has anything to do with them or can offer them anything, you right. know, and finance or fame, gain nothing. They, they are very unconditional. So. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They're not afraid of anybody. Mm -hmm. If they show humility, that is because they are great. Yeah. Because they know they can crush anyone. It's just they do things with caution and uh, with humanity at heart. Yes. So they don't always consider themselves or don't use enough tricks or strategy to win. Mm. Because they consider lives of others. Yes, yeah. yes. That seems to be weakness to, to others, but it's not like that. They are just born and raised in a very straight kind of heroism. Mm -hmm. They don't know tricks. They don't do things behind the enemy's back or stuff like that. Right. Yeah, and I just hope that the Taliban backs off, be more righteous with their citizens. Otherwise, if the West feels that citizens are oppressed under the Taliban. I don't think they would just stand by and watch. Yeah, you know, right. it's not their nature. Yes. They, they have these uh, heroes in them. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's their ideal. Yes, Master. Mm. And that ideal will not die. The Western people, they will jump in, I think, you know, sooner or later. Yes. Just to protect peace. Yes. Even if they have to go to war to protect peace. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. All the time. Yeah, it's true. Okay. I agree. Master, do you think that America lost the war in Afghanistan, as many people say? They were wrong. Hmm. The Americans won. Wow. Yes. You see, they won everywhere, even though they backed off. Yeah. Just for humanitarian reasons, no, just for peace reasons. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. They won because they are great, they are big. Because yeah. they know they can win if they want to. Yes. They won because they have heart. 
they don't want to continue the bloody war anywhere, yeah? Yes. They won't, I tell you. Yeah. Master, why do you think they won? Why? Yeah, I tell you why. Because they won, they won the hearts of the Afghans. Mm. You see that? Yes. It's Just true. a few hours after the Americans uh, pulling out, they all run to the airport mm -hmm. to go with them, yes. with only the clothes on their backs. They don't have any package, nothing. All these men, mm. they are men. They're not even women. They're to be afraid of of the Taliban torturing or, or controlling. Right. They're mostly men. And even though uh, the Taliban say they will uh, have amnesty and all that, they cannot trust, you see? Yes. They trust the Americans more. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. Mostly, they're men, uh, yes. leaving their families behind, not mm -hmm. even knowing when they will see them again. Yeah. They run to the Americans because they trust them more than they trust their own people, right. the Taliban. And, and while other Afghans knowing the danger and consequences still went out on the street to protest. Right. That should be a shameful mark in the history for the Taliban, no matter how they claim they are a winner. Yes, Master. Yeah. So now you understand why I say the Americans win? Yes. They won. They won everywhere. Everywhere the Americans left, people run after them. Hmm. Yeah, from hard. Vietnam also. Hundreds of thousands of from Vietnam, even before. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. When the Americans went to Germany and won the war, people came out to greet them. Hmm. They're not afraid of them. Yeah, everywhere, similar. So, that should be a shame on the Taliban. Hmm. They are called citizens, trusted strangers, more than their compatriots. The, the, the American troops who went to the airport just to, to bring some Americans out, but they ended up bringing hmm. also the Afghans. Yeah. 600 plus on just one airplane. Yes. They squeeze together mm. and being so happy that they're lucky to get in it. They have nothing with them. Yes. Yeah, they don't even know what America looks like. They don't know where they're taking them. Mm. They don't know whether or not they will have food or clothes where they're going. Yes. They just went. Mm. I don't see if they have any money on them either. Yeah. Mm. They just run with just the sandals, you know, some barefoot. Yes. yes. Because they, they run too fast, their, their sandals run away from them. Mm. They lost them. All over the airport, I saw the picture that the sandals and shoes mm. are all over. So you see, you can never win if you lose people's hearts. True. Yes. So this is for the whole world to witness even. Right. This is the Taliban that justifies the U.S. trustworthy presence on their own soil. Hmm. Yeah? On Afghanistan soil. Yes, yes. The Americans who came to the Kabul airport just to keep order or to register and all that, they came with very simple weapons, you know, oh, okay. just a few small guns. They exposed themselves to danger also. Oh, right. Yeah, and they're risking their lives. Wow. Because uh, the Sorry. troops are left and all the equipment is uh, stolen or yes. sold. Yeah. They are barely getting to know the situation, a risky and dangerous one. And they came and still stay and want to stay longer until all the vulnerable are rescued, you know, Americans or Afghans alike. They yes. did not discriminate. They say, we will not leave you behind. Even a pregnant woman mm. on the day of delivery run to the airport. Oh, wow. Just to go, go with the Americans. They feel safer with the stranger that they never knew before even. Yeah? yeah. And they trust the stranger soldier with their babies. One of the mm -hmm. uh, soldiers was picking up the baby over the barbed wires. And the pregnant mother delivered the baby on, on the American airplane. Just a time like that, and they run. Mm. Yeah, not worried about where they, they deliver the baby. You see That's what I'm right. saying? They trust Americans. Of course, they know when they go to the Kabul airport, they may encounter also problems, you see, a danger. Mm. Yes. With the checkpoints and with the Taliban guns and all that, they have nothing in their hands. They're unarmed. Yeah. They have only one pair of clothes that they're wearing.
day, night, it makes no difference. In their thousands, they just have to wait. And they're sleeping rough, hoping for news. Thousands of children, parents and grandparents grabbing sleep or basically passing out from exhaustion. The struggle never stops. No food, little water. When the sun comes up, the true horror of the conditions they're living in is obvious. The would-be evacuees are standing up to their knees in a sewage-filled canal. The stench is indescribable. Some have been here for days. Remember the heat, the lack of water, the lack of food and the conditions they're in are a cocktail just as lethal as any bullet. When they can identify people with the right papers to travel, they're pulled from the canal. There is no shade here, only what can be fashioned from scarves and plastic. The numbers of tiny children enduring all this is heartbreaking. It must be so, so scary. It's noisy here. There are gunshots and shouting the whole time. Their days are spent hoping someone will spot them and take them out of this hellhole and onto a plane. The wait is often days and days. You know, I can, I can cry forever thinking about, about this situation. Some people cannot get on the airplane. They wait two, three, four days mm. in the sun, in such a sun. You know, mm -hmm. in such a country, it is very hot now. Summer also, there's yeah. no shade, nothing. Yes. They sit under the sun yeah. on the ground to wait, to hope that they can get on the airplane and go to the Americans. Yes, they possible. trust their life, the life of their baby, the life of their wife. Just a few women, mostly a man. Women don't even dare to go out on the street. As soon as the Taliban came, the woman disappeared. Mm -hmm you know, hiding into their houses. So frightened they are. Mm -hmm. They attack on the, my sister with a gun. And uh, again, that the American soldier um, stopped here and carried us in here. Now we don't know what should we do. We go out of peace. This young woman fled the western city of Herat when Taliban fighters took over and tried to force her to marry one of them. In the past, when the uh, Taliban this, uh, was not here, we have almost good life. We, uh, I worked, I, I could work, I could drive, but now I cannot even drive. I sell my car. Even I cannot go out of home without any man. Do you think you're going to be able to get on an airplane? I don't know, I don't know. Just I want to go and be safe. Just fear Allah. You don't feel safe? <laughs> no. This should be a shame in the history of Afghanistan. Oh, yes. I don't care who wins the war, who not. This is really a shame. It's it so is. sad, so sad. It is very sad. I, I, I cry again, but who cares? So that's why I told you the Americans won, because they won the hearts of the people. Yeah. They, they win the hearts of the world right now also. Yeah, they do too. And you see, the Taliban, even with all these terrible things happening and deaths at the airport and all that, they still keep harassing and hunting women and hunting whomever was working with the government before or with the Americans before. Yes. And they just went on, you know, shooting or killing, torturing at random like that, mm -hmm. just to show their power. You their see? power, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the heart has more power than any weapon, believe it or not. Right. You see, the heart of the desperate people, and even the pregnant woman, and with the mother who brought the baby there, and trusted in the arms of the American soldier. The heart, yes. those hearts, that command, mm -hmm. even though silently, command the most powerful shoulders on earth, to come to their rescue, risking their lives. Despite great danger, you know, to their own lives, yeah, to the American shoulders lives. Right. Those hearts, those hearts, the Taliban cannot win, cannot win them over. Any leader must win, must win these hearts, if they call themselves a winner in the war and then even being arrogant as winning for that that's losing not winning 
Most loving and courageous Master, may your profound and truthful words be well considered by those accountable during this humanitarian crisis, as they realize that peaceful governance is the key to everyone's best interest, including their own. We earnestly pray for an improved situation and foremost for the safety of the Afghan people, the soldiers and others affected. May all divine protectors continue to assist precious Master and assure her wellness and peace. To learn what more Supreme Master Ching Hai has to say to the Taliban, please tune in to Between Master and Disciples on Saturday, September 4th for the full broadcast of this phone call.